Hi hey guys, I'm just making a little how-to video for this making connections assignment. So it's in your in unit two under scatter plots here. Um, so you're working your way through scatter plots, and when you get to the final making connections assignment, this is just kind of like a how-to. So it says first you have to create three scatter plots. And number one and two are done by hand, and number three is done using technology. So for number one and number two, the hours worked in this time in the jelly bean thing, you would just get a graph, piece of graph paper. You can go to your math department at your school and ask them, or just type in free printable graph paper and like just download some um, and print it out. And then you can complete that by hand, because I have to see you graph things by hand. So you'll need to do the first two by hand, and then just take pictures of those two graphs and then you can upload the pictures to the Dropbox through your Google Drive or your computer, or however, you, however you do that. I usually take a picture with my phone and then um, I add it to my Google Drive in here. And then from my Google Drive, I can go into the Hub Dropbox and um, upload from my Google Drive. So you can do that for number one and two. And then when you get to number three, you're doing it with technology. Um, I wanted to just show you how to do that. Okay, so you take your table information and you choose what technology do you want to use. My personal choice would be Des going to desmos.com. I think I like Desmos and we use it a lot in high school, so I feel like it would be the handiest thing. Because if you're going on to grade 10 math, then probably your teacher's going to use Desmos. Okay, so how Desmos works is, uh, here's your little screen area, but we're just working with quadrant one of the graph, so this all the positive stuff. So the positive x and the positive y axis. axis. Um, so I just shifted my graph to be that area. And then I'm going to add a table. Um, and then, so I just went to the plus and I clicked table. And then I'm just going to type in my baby weight stuff. Okay, so it was 4 and 10.5. And then it was 10 and 18. And... 8 and 14, 12 and 19. Okay, I feel like that's good enough. I'm not doing the whole thing because it's not my project. I don't want to give away the answer. Okay, so you can see how the points are getting plotted. So there's your scatter plot. It's not bad. And you can change the scale if you want, like the x and y axis scale, by going to this wrench here. And then here it shows you, like, what do you want to go up by? Ones, twos, threes. Oh, I want to go up by ones. And I want to start at zero and maybe go to my highest number on the x-axis is 12. So maybe we'll go to 15. So then it will adjust your scale for you. And on the y-axis, I want to go up by ones also. And I want to start at zero. And I want to go all the way to 22. Like, you can play around with it. So now mine's taking up this whole screen. Which, actually, sorry, I'm just going to reset it to default. Ooh, that's ugly. Um, okay, I have to fix mine. <laughs> I just want you to be able to see it a little better. <laughs> so we'll do that. Twos. Uh, maybe I'll go up by twos. How's that look? Y axis 22. Okay, and you can also add labels. So my x axis was. What was it? Weight or weeks? Weeks old for the baby and then the weight. Is that what it was? Okay, so the x-axis is weeks of the baby and then this one was the weight in pounds, I think. And then it will add that on your table for you. So that looks nice, kind of. Like you can change your grid lines and everything too. Like maybe get rid of the minor grid lines because that was looking a bit much. Play around with it. Okay. So that's how you create a graph in Desmos. It's pretty straightforward. The line of best fit's a little trickier, but it's actually good to know how to do it. Okay, so if I'm making a line of best fit, I know that a line, an equation of a straight line, we usually say y equals mx plus b, right? That's what we usually say for um, a straight line. So we're gonna use that information to create a line of best fit. So we're gonna say, instead of y, we're gonna type y1 it'll automatically make it a subscript for you. And I'm doing Y1 because that's what my data is called. My data is X1 and Y1. 
So I want to refer to my data in my table. So I'm going to put Y1. Then I'm going to use, of course, you can't really see it. But whoop. Then I'm going to use my, um, I'm just going to punch up the keyboard here. Click on ABC. And I'm going to use this squiggly line, the tilde or whatever it's called, um, the like approximation thing to get a line of best fit. So I'm not going to use equals. I'm going to use that because I know it's not going to be exactly equals to. And then I'm going to type M for slope, X1 for my X data, so MX plus B. And then Desmos will do the rest for you. So that'll create a line of best fit. And it tells you even like what your slope would be, 1.12, and what your y-intercept would be if you were to actually create a line of best fit. And then this r and r squared value just tells you how um, like valid your line is, or how close. So a perfect value would be one. So that would be like your lines are right, or your points are right on the line. Um, and so ours is quite close to one. So um, we're good. It's pretty accurate. Our correlation would be quite strong, I would say. All right, so that's how you do that. And I'm pretty sure, let's go back to the assignment. You have to line, add a line of best fit, create a scatter plot, and then you just have to answer the question. So that's it. So that's how you do it on Desmos. If you're not a fan of Desmos and you prefer using Google Sheets, I already did it. So let's try it again. I was practicing. Okay, so you go to your Google Drive account and you click New. And you click Google Sheets. And then now it brings you to a spreadsheet. So then you enter your information. So like weeks and the weight of the baby in pounds. And then you enter in your information, which I completely forgot. So I'm just going to make it four, four, four weeks and they're nine pounds. Seven weeks. I'm totally making that up. Ten pounds. Twelve weeks. 15 pounds, 14 weeks, 16 pounds, whatever it is. Okay, so there's your table. I'm just gonna make mine a little narrower. Um, maybe center it because I just want mine to look nice. Okay. Um, now let's turn this into a graph. So I'm just gonna highlight my data. I feel like that's what I'm supposed to do. And then I'm going to find this chart icon, insert chart. You can also go to the toolbar and say insert chart, whichever one. And it's just going to automatically probably make a bar graph. Yeah, but we don't want a bar graph. So we're going to switch the chart type to a scatter plot. There we go. So it, it put weeks on the bottom and weight on the y-axis, which is what we want. Because the independent variable would be weeks and the weight would be dependent because it's dependent on how old the baby is. Okay, so there you go. It did it for us. It also gave it a title, which you can change if you want. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, okay, so then to add a, a line of best fit, which they call a trend line, it's not super obvious. I had a bit of a hard time figuring it out, but you go to series in this chart editor, scroll down, and you click trend line. And you can choose like what kind you think it is. Do you think it's exponential? Probably not. Um, so we'll say linear. You can pick the color, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You can label it. Let's not. And you can show the R squared value if you want to. But also, let's not. Okay, so that's how you do it in Google Sheets. It's pretty easy there, too. Maybe even easier to add a tread line. But less valuable. Well, I don't know. I shouldn't say that. I just like Desmos better because I feel like we use it a lot in high school. So it's good to get familiar with it. Okay, so then once you do all that stuff, so if you create it in Desmos or in Google Sheets, what's your best way to get it to me? You already have like two pictures of other graphs. Like how are you assembling all this stuff? So as an option, you could stick it all in a Google Doc to make it just so awesome looking. Ugh, that's my go-to. So I could do a new, let's go, Google Doc you want or maybe a word doc whatever you like prefer and if I've uploaded pictures to my google drive I could insert them so I could insert an image from drive and it opens up your drive so I could be like 
Oh, let's find my graph. What should I insert here? Do I have a graph? I don't. Um, oh, there's one. So let's just insert that. So pretend that's the scatter plot I drew, which I know it's not, but anyways. Okay, so then I could insert the image of my scatter plot. So I could make this all in one document if I wanted to. I think it would look good. Okay. This is rough. Sorry if you're still watching. Okay, so I could call it Making Conclusions Assignment by Miss Schmidt. Okay, and then I could do, ooh, okay, I gotta organize this. Then I could do Table 1 and 2. Insert those picks there. Table three, I'll insert there. Okay, so then I'm going to insert my image from my Google Drive. Let's do this one, insert that. There's table one. Let's insert another fake image for table two. Insert that, see one GIF. Um, Can you like move things here? I don't use Google Docs that much. Okay, well, you know what? You guys play around with it because it's like painful to watch me do it, I think. <laughs> okay, so um, here's like the assignment. So I just did my two scatter plots, but they're not actual scatter plots. And then I'll insert my third table. So how do we do that? That is the question. So my table three, if I did it in Google Sheet, I mean, it's still not, like, I just want this picture. So you know what I've gone to is I really like Snagit. I don't know if 